Good morning, Dr. Oscar Moses, pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church, Salt Lake City, Utah. Here's the question for today. What do you do when you don't know what to do? The answer is found in our text today, another time in another place, but the Lord shows up in times of uncertainty. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We ask that you would now open our hearts to your word, that we might hear it, receive it, become stronger as a result thereof. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Are we ready? Aim, fire. This is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It is my weapon. It is my roadmap in enemy country. In my Bible is found the plan of salvation. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is by our humility towards our Christ, hospitality within our congregation, hard work within our community, that the unsaved would be one to Christ. Turn with me to the Old Testament book of Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. And I certainly pray your, that you have your Bibles, uh, that you might read the entire chapter in your quiet time. But for sake of time and sensitivity of the task, I want to focus on verses 3 and 12. Verses 3 and 12. Let me read it. It says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah. Jehoshaphat feared and proclaimed the fast. But look at verse number 12. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. Don't miss that. Neither know we what to do. Modern day translation, we don't know what to do. But look at how that text ends. It says, but our eyes are upon thee. But our eyes are upon thee. Let me stop right there. That's what I want to talk about today. And their eyes were watching God. And their eyes were watching God. Jehoshaphat was a good king. He was a great king. He did everything the Lord called him to do. But it did not stop the Lord from allowing the enemy to come forth to attack Jehoshaphat and the nation of Israel. The Moabs, the Ammons, the Ammonites were relatives of the nation of Israel. As a matter of fact, when they came out of Egypt, the Lord told them, not the Israelites, not to mess with those smaller little tribes. And they did not. And now years later, they've come back and they've gained power and decided to come after Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel. So, Needless to say, it was a faith-shaking report when these messengers came to King Jehoshaphat that these three armies have come together uh, to attack Israel. It rattled him. It shook him up. The Bible says so much so that he was fearful. The king was fearful. How do you handle life when you get faith-shaking reports like that? This COVID-19 crisis has literally changed the daily lexicon, the way we speak social distancing and six feet here and six feet there. Faith-shaking reports have a way of making you fearful. And this is what happens with Jehoshaphat. He gets on his knees, he prays, he goes private, but then he gets up from his private prayer, he goes public. He goes into the congregation and he prays with the congregation. And he prays from verses six to 12, not a scattered praying prayer, but he prays uh, that, that God would uh, remember who they are that he reminds God of who he is and reminds God of what he's done, that he makes a request of God for help. Verse 12 closes with Jehoshaphat saying, in front of the people, and verse 13 tells you who all was in that congregation. It was all of Israel, all of Judah, uh, families together, their wives, their children, and their little ones. And Jehoshaphat simply says, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are watching you. There are four movements in the text and let's see if we can teach this. Uh, I pray that you would get pen and paper and write this down and go back and study it for future, for future references. Uh, this text teaches us the necessity of doing four things when we don't know what to do. Or four things that, this, that, that we learn as a lesson. Number one, private prayer. Jehoshaphat in verse three goes down on his, on his knees for private prayer. He doesn't grab his messengers. He doesn't grab his friends. He prays by himself. And there are times that you need to just get all alone by yourself. Look at verse 3. He set himself to seek the Lord. He set himself. The original language is he set his face to seek the Lord. Set 
means that he made a decision. He was thoroughly mixed like permanent and like cement and permanently set. His mind was made up. His heart was, his desire was to see the Lord. That's the personal time of prayer that you spend with the Lord. But then after the personal time of prayer, he connects with other believers. After he gets goes private, he goes public, which is to, to suggest that there is strength in the body of Christ. We come to get edified, strengthened by others, to connect with others. Listen, we're connecting right now. The church is connecting right now through this, this mode, mode called social media. The building is not the church. We are the church. And right now, the church has connected through this broadcast. We've co we're connecting with other believers. We go to church. First of all, the guy, God might be glorified. The saints might be edified. That's you and I. But then that sinners might be evangelized. That edified means that we are getting built up. Listen, nobody at the club telling you how to get through a hard time. Nobody at the riverboat, I know y'all don't go there, but nobody at the riverboat or at the bar are telling you what to do when you don't know what to do the right way. But when I get with some believers that are praying, when I'm praying, and I can thank God that I have a support system that can lift me up when I don't know what to do, that's good news. So let me hurry up because the old clock on the wall is ticking. He prays a private prayer. He connects with other believers. He's specific in his prayer. He, he doesn't pray a scatterbrain prayer. He, he's very specific. He reminds God of what he's done, who he is, and then he makes a request to God for help. For help. And then the last thing he does, uh, the people, along with Jehoshaphat, they peer into the unseen for the unknown. I know that's wordy. Peer into the unseen for the unknown, but that's what he does. He he looks to God in the heavens for help. And people say, well, I can't, I can't see God. What am I looking for? The Hebrew writer says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is, eyes of faith, eyes of expectation. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek that faith, seek thy face. The Greek word exadio means to go after him, to him with all that you have to seek his face. Zora Neale Hurston says in her book, and their eyes were watching God, that everybody needs to know God for themselves. Grandmama's faith can't get it for you. Papa and mama's faith can't get it for you when life knocks the wind out of you and has you up against the ropes and your knees are wobbling from boxing with the devil all night long. You need to have a relationship with God for yourself. I'm preaching this because we're living in uncertain times. It's what Victor Turner, the anthropologist, calls liminal spaces. I preached about them. I read about them. But Lord have mercy. I'm in one right now. And a liminal space means betwixt and between, not quite where we're going, but we can't go back from where we came from. It's the old has gone away and we're not sure what the new is going to bring. It's like being on an elevator or a staircase that they're designed to get you someplace from one point to another point, but not for you to stay there. That's where we're at right now. We're in a liminal space. We're in betwixt and between. And although everything we might have known familiar to us might not ever be, we have to trust God for our new tomorrow that he's able to put our feet on solid ground. Some years ago, State Farm did a, a survey in Pembroke, Florida, about uh, the most dangerous intersection in the world in Pembroke, over 357 deaths between 1999 and 2000. And they said that it was dangerous because of whatever decision the driver made when they got to that intersection. This is where we're at, brothers and sisters. COVID-19 has brought us to a fork in the road, and the decisions that we make today will determine how the trip will end up. Here are the things that I want to tell you. I said three, but I got four. What do you do when you don't know what you do? Number one, go down in meditation. That's what Jehoshaphat does. He goes down in med 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 meditation. Number two, connect for edification. Connect to Facebook for edification. Connect to the Calvary website, connect to whatever means of social um, 
social aid that we have or social media aid or whatever tool we have to keep the church connected. Because in times like this, we need to stay together. We must stay connected. Number one, go down to meditation. Number two, you have to connect for edification. Stay together. But number three, look up with expectation. That's classic theology of hope right there. And the theology of hope says that um, I will not resign in this. I will remain defiant, resistant in the face of this trial and tribulation. I won't give up. I won't throw in the towel because I believe that God is going to make a way. It says, God, I know that you're sovereign. I know that you love me. I know that your word is true. I know that you're providential. And I know that at the end of this, even at the end of this COVID situation or life, that the church militant will eventually become the church triumphant. That's us, the church triumphant. At the end, we win. It may look as though we're not winning, but the victory is ours through Christ Jesus. I gave you three things. I told you go down in meditation. I told you to come in, connect with edification. I told you to look up for expectation. Here it is, number four, and I'm gone. Eat up with gratification. <laughs> I know you're wondering where's that in the text. Watch the movements in the text. After they look up with expectation, because they don't know what they what what they're, what they're supposed to do. What do you think they're waiting on? A word from the Lord. And in the midst of the congregation, after they, while they're looking up with expectation, the Spirit of God falls on Jehaziel, one of the oh, I'm about to get happy about myself. One of the priests, and the priest said, "Hey, y'all, don't worry. This is the OT Moses translation. Don't worry. Don't be scared." God got this thing. As a matter of fact, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Now, how do you eat up with, ex with gratification? Here it is. When you're looking to God for expectation, to feed a famished and a hungry soul, come expecting that God will meet that need. Here it is. When you connect to Facebook on Sunday mornings, when you connect the Bible study or through the whatever mode or medium we have to stay connected, come expecting to eat. Let me give you this story. About five, six years ago, my beautiful wife and I, we were traveling down south. We were traveling from Biloxi to, to Jackson, Mississippi. And in between Jackson and Mississippi, we, we were going to stop in Hattiesburg because we wanted to stop at Shoney's. Yeah. Shoney's, oh, you could eat buffet, and she, she had her mouth set for that chicken and waffle, and I just wanted to just attack that buffet. We got to Hattiesburg, and the Shoney's was closed. Wow, I was so upset. Here is my point, that when you get ready to, to connect with Bible study, when you get ready to connect to the worship on Sunday morning, come with the same attitude, come with the same appetite, not to eat chicken and waffles, but to get soul food, food for the soul. I'm not talking about black eyed peas and, and cornbread. I'm talking about the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The, the psalmist says this, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Eat up with gratification. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this time. We pray, oh God, that your word will strengthen us and that it will feed our famished souls as we look up to you because we don't know what to do. We're expecting a word from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There might be someone who's out of church, in between church, never accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal savior. The four walls of the building is not the church, the body of Christ. The believers are the church. If you're not saved, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That simply means that I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. He was buried. God rose him from the dead. He sits on the right hand of the Father making intercession. I got to go, y'all. Old clock on the wall says my time is out. But we need your financial support. Let me leave you with this question. For members of the church, you are expected, you're obligated. But for those who are just viewing, we really appreciate your gifts. Here is the question. Why not support the movement that Jesus Christ died for? God bless you.